Okay, so this is module nine. Uh, we go through uh, uh, RDF stream uh, continuous sparkle in briefly C sparkle, which is a technology developed my, by my research lab in Italy a couple of years ago. This is the agenda of the after an introduction, we go, we follow the same pattern of yesterday when we were talking about EPL. We go, we explore the language, uh, exploiting uh, an example. Let's make everything easier. Unfortunately, uh, do we have no time to make the hands-on as yesterday because CSPACO technology is a little bit more, let's say, verbose than EPL because it's a research product, you know. But I will try to make everything clear as much as possible. Let's start with a, a memo about uh, Sparkle. I don't know how much you are uh, uh, used to know the language Sparkle. is the Sparkle protocol and query language, RDF query language. It allows you to go through uh, RDF graphs and it has an expressiveness of a powerful query language. Uh, CSparkle is built on top. It extends the Sparkle semantics. Uh, it extends the, the query form, uh, adding the register clause, which allow you to uh, report uh, a stream. We will see them in detail. It adds extend the data clause for targeting streams. And it also extends the where clause by adding a filter function, which operates over timestamps. Uh, CSparkle is uh, Sparkle 1.1 compliant, so you have all the functionality of Sparkle uh, except for updates. Uh, I will show you the limitation, the limitation in the end of this talk. Um, let's start with uh, our running example. Uh, you remember these slides come from the uh, uh, data stream, sorry, stream processing, the stream processing talk, and we have three different streams which are encoded in, now we see how. One is from RFID, uh, a sensor. One is from Foursquare, the social network, and one from Facebook. Uh, our window is built up on this, theme, this three stream, and we will have an answer over time. Let's look about what the streams are talking about. We have uh, a sensor stream which point out who is uh, in, a, in a room, for example. And we have uh, the Foursquare streams uh, reports the check-ins of people who are using the database. While the Facebook has a little bit more ex um, expressive stream, it allows you to uh, tell where you are, according again with uh, this conceptual model of a room, for example, and who uh, you are with. Uh, so visualize the running example. We have uh, two, two rooms, a blue one and a red one. And the two sensors are uh, identified by the color of the room. So we have the blue sensor and the red sensor. Alice is in the red room, and we know that from the visualization, from the sensor identification, while Bob is in the blue room, and we know that because he does a check-in with, uh, with Foursquare. David and Carl are uh, respectively in the red room and in the blue room. Uh, what do we want to achieve? We want to complete the sensors, the, the stream, by inferring the information which is not explicit. Okay, so it is relevant to understand what the stream is talking about, but it's much more relevant to understand what is not already in the data, you know, okay? So, for example, uh, Bob is talking, uh, he tells us he is in the blue room because he makes a check-in with Foursquare. And Carl tells he is with Bob. So we can infer that car is in the blue room as well. How we can you know, uh, provide this kind of inference? Uh, Emanuele told you about how stream reasoning uh, exploit domain knowledge to inf integrate the information. That's a, a case. But what you have to understand is that the information is not all the same. You have a, the model, the whole model incorporates the whole description. But you have a part of information which is a background and is static, like for example the room and this connection with the other rooms, the sensor position, the person itself. We know there are things that we know it doesn't change over time. Well, we have a part of information which is otherwise time changing, like the observation itself, and its relation 
is something that we want to discover and go through to uh, do our inference. The post is again a part of the information who change, which changes and, and, and so on. The relation can be itself changing even though the entity is static like a person. Is with is something that changes over time. But let's add a schema to this knowledge. We can uh, exploit, for example, RDFS and connect uh, the information in a, in a hierarchical way. The post is nothing else than a kind of observation, because each tells us the position of a person, while the post as a relation is related to the observed property. If we consider a person as a subclass of a sensor, though this ontology is available online, you can go to it to make this experience again when, you, when we finish the presentation. And for our experiment, we populate it with the instances we saw in the previous slide, the one with the two rooms, remember? So uh, ju just step one step back and think uh, uh, from a theoretical point of view uh, about the streams. Emanuele point you out why we choose to uh, represent the streams as a pair between an RDF triple and a, uh, and a timestamp. So I will not go through these again. Uh, what you need to think about is that the stream is uh, uh, the, the timestamp in the stream is like an annotation for the <coughs> for the triple, and the requirement is that just that is not decreasing. So you can have multiple triples with the same timestamp. They are basically a contemporary information. Okay. Just a couple of examples, like uh, the red sensor observe Alice in the, in the red room at timestamp one, or Carl post uh, uh, he, Carl is with Bob uh, at timestamp two. Uh, let's go uh, to the Sparkle language to see better what, what I'm talking about. Um, now we will go to the first the, the, the form clause, uh, um, both the query form and the stream form. Then we go to the identification of relevant information, and we show you how to merge information through joins from different streams, or even static information. Uh, let's start from the first part of uh, the, the query form. Sparkle, C Sparkle extend, as I told you already, with the register clause. Basically, it allows you to uh, output something in uh, which changes over time, which changes over time. It can be either an instantaneous table, so it's a binding, it's a relational evaluation. Uh, it's instantaneous because it's relevant of the moment the query is evaluated. It can be a, uh, a graph. So again, you're not changing the, the data model that are coming into, but you're changing how it's represented. Okay? And finally, you have a data stream. See, Sparkle can be used, uh, if you think about Sparkle is a protocol, is protocol itself, as an output for another data stream. So you can get some streams, incorporate them, and generate them. If you think about yesterday, everything goes through the, to the concept of composability. We can change query in a network to uh, derive, to infer some knowledge, and again, publish in another stream, exactly as happened with EPL, right? So uh, let's say, for example, with the, the Facebook stream. We registered our query to our stream just now don't care about the form stream. I know it, I will go through this in a few seconds, but uh, focus on the register query. We need to name this query. And the resulting variable binding is a, it changed over time as we want to. Uh, the window concept will define which data you are able to uh, query at the moment in over time. Um, how to say the stream registration? It goes only with the construct. So you need to define a pattern for the query for the stream to be populated. Of course, uh, the information will be uh, in the RDF, so it can be as well as flexible as uh, RDFS is. But you need a, you need a pattern to populate it, okay? And the custard clause comes for that. It tells you to describe the triples how they were, should be built according to your uh, where clause, which describe a pattern you are matching on your incoming. Uh, uh, data stream. Let's think about the window as a, uh, the graph, the whole graph you are talking about, you are uh, uh, getting from your variable streams. So, a couple of notes. Um, the execution, um, I would say, yeah, this, the triple annotation is a, again a data stream, but the, the, the timestamp is not related with the one of the streams 
which are coming into. It's a new one, it's a production, okay, it's a new production, it's a new uh, annotation. Um, uh, the query execution can be either empty or a wall graph. So we need to understand uh, when you define this kind of language, language, we need to know when the output is an empty answer and what does it mean, uh, semantically speaking. And uh, I already showed you that uh, oh, the timestamp is always dependent on the query evaluation and not on which triples are uh, identified by the workloads. Let's go again uh, over the dataset close. Uh, we have the from stream uh, ad, um, action, which, which extends the standard Sparkle dataset close. And you already saw it already because I already spoiled a bit with the previous query. Uh, it's similar to the way standard Sparkle targets the datasets. The datasets are usually identified by URL, URIs, and as uh, the same happens for uh, data streams. It's the same abstraction. The only uh, difference is that you have the timestamp which annotates each triple, right? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, they define the triples who are available for the filtering or ordering. Uh, in your opinion, how we filter this, uh, such a, an incoming flow? If you think about yesterday, we spoke about the concept of window, either uh, sorry, either window or pattern matching. Sysparkle is built on top, uh, is th thinks uh, in a data stream management system way. So he has the concept of window for chunking the incoming flow and provides you the data which are available for your writing, for your filtering. Uh, it uh, allows you to define both a sliding window, which uh, are defined by two parameters. We saw, we saw yesterday the dimension of the window and the slide parameter. The, two consecutive windows are overlapped of uh, a part of them, or tumbling window, which they ex advance exactly for the, w the entire duration of the window, and two consecutive windows as a, an empty set, as a, an interception. This is the grammar of the from stream close. It basically allows you to define different uh, time constraints, either, uh, sorry, different time constraints or uh, physical constraints, because Sparkle supports both the logical window or these physical ones. Let's give an example of it. Uh, using the social stream of Facebook again, we, this time we focus on the registration, on the targeting. So if you see in the query, we have uh, the URI of, the, of our stream and uh, the specification of the window, which is done by the range operator, gives you the dimension, and the step is the slide parameter. This is a sliding logical window. Um, how does it work? Sysparkle uh, exploits the same semantic of EPL, but it outputs as soon as a triple comes into. And uh, uh, if you remember yesterday, I show you in a, briefly, in a very, very quickly the snapshot close, which can be used for extend the output close, the close you use for override the, the behavior, the standard behavior of the window, the window reports. Sysparkle always output the wall content of the window. Why? Because it um, is thinking for uh, naive reasoning. So he needs everything to be recomputed all the t every time. Okay. Let's go to another example. Two streams this time. So you can basically uh, integrate in the same query information which comes from different uh, sources. But you have a requirement, the window should be the same. Okay, this is a, one of the limitations of Sparkle, one, of uh, the current version of Sparkle. Uh, actually, if you think about it, this, this, uh, the slower stream you want to address is the one who leads, which leads the whole computation, right? I mean, you want to define a window to don't uh, uh, undersample or oversample the stream, the slower one is the one who le which leads. Uh, the chaining, uh, um, okay, the, the query can be incorporated to populate a stream we saw yesterday by the register stream close. And as we saw yesterday for EPL, they can be represented as a, as a graph, right? So the query chaining is the, the, the abstraction which allows us to uh, build a query network for our inference. For the example we have here, 
we have two streams for Square and Facebook, which goes into two different queries. Uh, actually, they, they are the same, but they can be conceptually think as taught as two different one. And the output is a new stream, which is uh, should be represented in our abstraction, and they goes uh, into a uh, uh, downstream query, which outputs the final result. This is the Bob posting about Bob in the blue room, and this is Carl posting about Carl be being with Bob. Uh, the stream, uh, the two different streams, uh, uniform the, the the information according to our needs for the inference. And the final one tells that Carl is in the blue room as well. So. Uh, we finally achieved the kind of, the, of inference we want to, thank you to uh, this networking network built through query. Think of query as a query can be seen as a role, a rule, which basically apply some logics, your business logic, on your on the incoming information flow. So, gotcha. But unfortunately, we cannot achieve this other one because we don't have the information on the stream, right? Um, we have also the possibility to exploit the reasoning. I, I was always speak about inference and not reasoning for a specific reason. With reasoning, we intend something which is related to the schema, the, the schema behind our data model. If you remember, at the beginning, I show you that we can uh, complete our ontology, for example, through RDFS statements. So this query uh, in the example exploit the relation between post and observe, which are sub-properties, to retrieve all the results uh, according to our ontology, uh, ontology schema. So uh, we have Bob posting about Bob, and there's a red sensor observing the presence of a person in the room. The, the ontology exploit the, the RDFS kind of reasoning to know that a post is a subclass of, uh, is a properties of observing, and that's the output we have, both the information, okay? Finally, the timestamp uh, uh, function which extends the where clause of, um, of Santa Sparkle. This is a very powerful clause because uh, it allows us to filter on the uh, definition of the graph according to the timestamp. And we see it gives us a lot of uh, um, opportunity to exploit order aware reasoning, basically a way to improve the performances, which is the semantic of uh, the timestamp function. Well, if uh, a typo is not in the window, you have an error, okay? So you need to be aware about what you are querying off. Uh, if the typo appears only one, of course, the timestamp is the one of the typo you want to know. But what happens if you have multiple instances of the same typo with different timestamps? Well, this is an assumption of Sparkle semantic, or Sparkle semantics. We take the one which is most recent. Uh, this kind of assumption are the one who change, which change the actual semantic of the language. And that's why each stream, uh, stream reasoner is different, because uh, they may, may, they may, the uh, developer can make different assumptions in the implementation side, uh, implementation wise, right? So um, who is following whom is our example. So the filter clause here inside the, the where clause uh, exploit this, um, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, namespace to understand which person is coming before another person. Of course, the relation is uh, working on the timestamp evaluation, right? So, um, uh, uh, one of the last information about this is the uh, accessing of the background information. Well, uh, we saw already the stand the from stream close. But what about the old, plain old RDFS, RDF graphs, graphs? Well, SysParkle allow you to still target those graphs, but uh, you need to integrate the information in your query but this from the, with the from, oh, sorry, with the old from close from the standard Sparkle. Um, are, they are still identified by URI. Uh, you know, from the query is um, clear the kind the nature of the information you are targeting, right? Um, how Sparkle, C Sparkle is uh, uh, implemented? For example, 
the product, the implementation of uh, our research lab is the SysParkle engine. It's an architecture which takes a Sparkle query and uh, rewrites it into different query language. It uh, splits the data stream manager system query from the SysParkle query and write it as a EPL query. Under the hood of the SysParkle engine, there is ISPER, so EPL, the one we saw yesterday. Uh, on the other hand, the, the Sparkle part of the query is uh, sent, sent as an input to the GINA rule engine. The whole system is in memory. That's the feature at glance. It's continuous querying in memory, push base. So remember yesterday I told you that ISPER allows you to provide uh, also the, the pool modeling for the trivia data. See, Sparkle engine doesn't. You need to you know, work around this operation by developing your streamer for your uh, old uh, play, um, pool APIs. And it is reactive, so it gives you an answer as soon as the information comes into. Uh, this Sparkle Engine uh, 0.9.5 supports Sparkle 101, and it allows you to do quick chaining. And the kind of, uh, sorry, the background graph uh, assets are updatable, so you can actually push new triples in your background information. Uh, naive stream reasoning, what do we mean? We mean that, as I told you before, the wall reasoning possible, the materialization of your window graph is recomputed every, every time it, the window changes. Even though it changes for the slide parameter of your sliding logical or physical window. Okay? Time-aware matching. That's what I was talking about before. The timestamp function allows you to do, exploit the ordering of the, of the data in your window to improve the performance of the reasoning. If you think about RDF is itself not, uh, not orderless, uh, it's not ordered, it doesn't, doesn't have any order. The typos are randomly disposed in the stream, in the, in the, in the graph. While uh, with the certain function, we can exploit this time awareness. Um, it's an extensive middleware. Uh, the developers of SysParticle Engine uh, was inspired probably by the ISPER implementation. I mean, uh, handling the system while it's running is uh, very powerful. We saw it yesterday, you know. Uh, an API-driven uh, interface and, uh, for, the, for the engine itself, and the same thing for streams, queries, it's, uh, queries or listeners are available for you when you are interacting with the engine. It's available, it's open source, the, the entire system. That's, that's pretty cool. And the source code is on GitHub, and you also have a ready to go pub with a bunch of examples you can use for your experiment. And if you have a question, you can also send me an email to me or to Marco Balduini, which is the, the current responsible uh, for, these, uh, for this we'll project. Sorry? We will give it to you instead of tomorrow. It will be happy, I guess. <laughs> Something less to do. <laughs> So um, finally, there's no limitation. Uh, large background data mismatch the, uh, and the timestamp function spoil the performances. So so far, if you apply the timestamp function and or a very big ontology, which has also instances inside, it's messing everything up because uh, the whole system is in memory. So you need to have a very huge memory availability for doing this. Um, uh, no support for name graph, yeah, and name streams. That's a limitation comp uh, comparing what refer to Sparkle. We are working on it. Not me, but he is working on it. <laughs> support multiple windows. I was I was telling you already. You need to 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 set the same window for all the stream. That actually is uh, one of the biggest limitation. But as well as you uh, think about the the window definition altogether, you can work around it. And finally, triple-based window are buggy. For my experience, you know, I rarely uh, exploit uh, triple-based windows, but that's my experience. So, no, my, my understanding is triple-based windows are meaningless. Because uh, what does taking three triple means? There are three separate triples. 
Yeah, yeah the, the point is that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a design error that we did back in time, and uh, we yeah. are fixing it. We need to change it. As a community, we are fixing it. We need to change the slide and say they are deprecated. <laughs> this way, they <laughs> must, much more smart, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> deprecated is like uh, programming la pro uh, the a keyword for programmers. Um, now, I mean, um, since Sparkle is not uh, extendable, the, that's not something is not in the slide. I showed you that you can control its per core uh, clock externally, right? Uh, since Sparkle don't does do, don't, doesn't do that now, I'm working on doing that soon. And that's why triple base windows are, ma are meaningless, as he said. Uh, if you think about it, you cannot, um, there's an assumption that I faced a lot during my master thesis, and he's still telling me that, so because sometimes I forgot. You cannot rely on the incoming information flow rate. You don't know it. That's why triple base windows are meaningless. You basically uh, are counting about what? Okay? Well, the, the window asks you to. Uh, question, sorry, need, uh, makes you question yourself about the nature of the thing you are receiving. Okay, and if you want to work on a context uh, when you need to co to control the cardinality of the window, you can still control the time uh, engine from the outside, and you know, uh, bring the logic assumption to the physical world. Does it make sense for you? Then I can go through the day if you want offline, but. That's the main. From logical window, you can and the external time controlling assumption, you can go to implement the physical window when you need it, but it's rare. I have a question. So you said that the large background data can spoil the performance. So, so you're saying that it may not be able to fit in one node, one computing node, or in memory. Like that. Exactly. So um, have you also experienced that your Sparkle or the RDF data from the stream, um, can that also be so big that cannot be fit into memory, or is it just the background data? So you, you are asking, can you kill the engine with a huge no, data stream? Not kill, so if you go to previous slide, uh, you know, previous, where you have that uh, architecture, uh, yeah. yeah, this one. So you have here, you have a Sparkle engine. Yeah. Right? So the data coming to Sparkle engine, can that streaming data be so big that it can kill one node, or is it just the background data which can? Absolutely. Uh, if you want to answer it, or mm -hmm. I, I can. The, the thing is that yes, that, that can happen. The, so the, have, you, the, have, you ever, have you experienced it? Happen? I don't. I, I don't. Uh, they probably. So yes, we experience it every day. <laughs> and we do what everybody does in this world. When you have a centralized system, you give it enough memory for the worst case. Mm -hmm. so basically, for the thing that we did for Expo, mm -hmm. where we are giving 32 gigabytes mm -hmm. of, of RAM to the system. And uh, the other deployment that I was showing you for Como, that one runs in 2 gigabytes. So basically, we have a sort of rule of thumb. <laughs> this is of this size, we produce a peak of that amount of tweets, the tweets become that amount of triples, the entire chain we produce that amount of memory allocation, let's give it <laughs> this. And uh, we also experiment for, uh, I didn't show you, but uh, we, we have done an experiment following the Eclipse in March. And what we were doing was uh, we, we bought on Amazon a machine where you can add memory, like Blessing Plus, and we experiment that and it works. So somehow, uh, what we are trying to do is to create a loopback that monitors the virtual machine and when you get close enough uh, to the barrier, it adds memory automatically. Amazon has a service to do it. Yeah. So okay. it, it can be done as a sort of elasticity in the memory. Uh, of course, oh, uh, have to start studying the trade off in cost. Auto scaling, right? Opens the, so do, does it pay off to have elasticity? Shall I buy the machine with uh, the peak memory and that's it? For that specific experiment, uh, we showed that it was okay because we could not predict it at all. So and we were very thinking if the entire Europe start tweeting, the flow would be. <laughs> so, so do you think uh, distributing that is an option for you in this? Yes, it is. Well, our next implementation, I hope, will be on Spark. And so uh, I hope that we, we that's, make it. Uh, that's another piece of my thesis. <laughs> yeah. That was a marker. Um, we tried it uh, three times now. 
So I've been working on this S4 implementation back uh, in 2009, but it didn't work out because we did several errors in the joints. Then I was advising the one uh, that was done in IBM on uh, InfoStream stream, and that one works, but it works because InfoStream is really a distributed composite event processor of the high quality. I mean, if you think that Spark has something that does magic, that one does incredible magic. The difference is that that one is really expensive. Really expensive. It costs something like 1,000 euro per year. You cannot afford it. Right? I mean, you must be the city of Dublin, and uh, you must really believe that it makes sense to ask yourself where the people are and bring them to somewhere else uh, with a run in uh, dynamically computed uh, <laughs> bus routing, okay? Otherwise, I don't think that you can afford that amount of money. So I want to do a cheap version. So that, that would be uh, really breakthrough. And currently, there is none. So there was a work done by the people in, uh, in the UPN, University of in Madrid, mm -hmm. that we are collaborating with that is done on Storm, but that one suffered exactly the same problem that uh, we had uh, with S4. That is really hard uh, to predict the size of the joints, and you cannot uh, really do it nicely. But were you commenting about the join on Spark yesterday? Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Spark is that doing really, joins. That, that uh, is really a breakthrough, because yeah. you don't have to say how many nodes that you want yeah, for yeah, a joint to be computed. It distributes the join job in yeah. So that is the opportunity I see, and I hope that it will work out. Because the, the real problem was we create a topology for the joints, but we don't know if that is okay with the cardinality because we cannot predict the size of the data of the input data. And you have no control the flow rate. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, yeah. And if you're interested in this fetching remote data, there is a new implementation coming up that will have. Uh, a cache that uh, fetch uh, data with several <coughs> different policy from remote services and somehow limits the amount of things that you have locally and try to minimize uh, the, the amount of fetching that you have to do of the remote data. And it will arrive in probably in the next year. So the implementation exists, we, have submitted the, we are submitting the paper to www and we don't want to release the implementation before the paper is accepted. So, where to know more about uh, CSparkle and the CSparkle engine? Uh, this is the, the paper of the, uh, the, the founder, but you can go to this slide here. Uh, finally, closing. Join the RSP community. We have a W3C group, so you are welcome to join us if you are interested. Uh, Jean-Paul Cabimonte is the chair of the group, and also with Emmanuel doing the ordering and reasoning uh, workshop next week at the ISWC. Uh, what's next? <laughs> so skip it. <laughs> Let's go anyway. Yeah, the semantics is, uh, anyway. I will put a couple of links there, but uh, I'm not there, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. If you have any other questions,